What is up everybody? Welcome to another day of the vlog. I got another automotive vlog for you today and today I'm gonna rebuilding a gonna be rebuilding a uh, clutch master cylinder. So oops, still leaking. So uh, yeah, so I have a this is a aftermarket. It's a Tilton 75 series I was gonna use this on my project truck, which you have seen in you know prior videos, but uh, I've got a leak on it. So not only that I also have to mock up another pedal um, and I got a proper clevis instead of actually using this little homemade one. Used a bunch of washers and nuts and welded it all together. But anyways, I'm going to walk you through how to rebuild this. And then I'm going to make a separate video on mocking up a new pedal assembly for this uh, master cylinder. So, uh, yeah, today's going to be kind of short, but, you know, at least I'll walk you through this. And most master cylinders are the same, so, you know, this, this can kind of apply across the board if you have to rebuild one. Uh, rebuild kits are actually really cheap, so without further ado, let's go ahead and let's do this. Alright, so I started off by taking off the rubber boot. This was right on top here. You can just use a little screwdriver and it just comes off. It just sits right there. So upon taking this off, I found my first problem. And one is, as you can see, the rod right here is actually crooked. So I'm going to try and actually straighten that out. I'm going to give it a good inspection though, make sure there's no cracks or something in it. Um, I was having an issue with my uh, clutch pedal being extremely hard, but I think that's why um, uh, I had a really... well. It was really hard, but I think it, the issue really was because of my alignment to my clutch pedal. So I bought a new pedal assembly, and like I said, that's going to be a different video. But anyways, if you can see right here, we have a uh, C-clip or a C-clamp here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a really small set of needle nose. These will work fine, or you can get C-clamp pliers. I'm going to press the clamp in, and it comes off. So that just sits in a little groove. Okay, so that's ready. So now I can take this part off. So I have a clamp right here I have this washer and then this rod this is why I have to try and straighten it out because essentially this is kind of a custom piece I mean I guess you could make one if you tried grabbing a regular screw and you tried mushrooming it into something but you know again you kind of sacrifice some some movement there so then when you take it off you get this little plunger piece right here so this plunger right here it has an o-ring on top and it has an o-ring on the bottom and then you have a spring right here that helps it return. So this spring right here goes into the cavity right there. Just like that. And then there's another piece right in the middle. And this piece just sits right at the very bottom. And this goes within that spring just like this. So when you push in, it kind of helps it return the pedal back. Okay, we're going to set that down. Now we're going to grab this. And that's essentially what you have. It's just an ore face and on the inside. Uh, so as you can see on this one, this one's kind of easy to tell. But as you can see, the outlet is right over here on the back of it. So on the very back of this right here, there's a hole. So every time you push in that plunger, it creates pressure. And once it, uh, the opening here, once it reaches one of these portions, the fluid will be under pressure and then it'll come out of that hole and it'll help you uh, essentially push in your clutch pedal. And that's what makes it hydraulic. So now I'm going to get this cleaned up. And then I'm going to show you how to put it all back together using the new parts that we just got. So it'll take me a minute, but I'll be back shortly with this all cleaned up, and then we'll continue on with rebuilding this thing. All right, so we got our new kit right here, and actually pretty much comes with all new internal components, so we don't really have to worry about uh, cleaning the other parts out. I did clean out the cylinder on the inside, check it for any nicks or anything. Um, didn't really find anything of concern, so I'm going to go ahead and start replacing this. So we're going to start with our first thing is this little... I don't know what you'd call this thing, but it goes inside the spring like this, just like that, and this seats at the very bottom. So the easiest way to do this would be to grab your master cylinder, put it in, and then lay it down instead of trying to drop it into place. And it kind of just holds itself right there. As you can see, the spring's right here, but you know, you kind of got that little nail right there in control. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab our next component, which is the actual plunger uh, piece itself. I'm going to stick the spring through that hole right there in the back of it. And I'm going to wiggle it in. Now these already come lubed, so you don't have to worry about applying any other lube before installation. Go ahead and put that on the vise there. Okay, so now the next component here would be my rod. Well, actually, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and try to straighten that out now, and then we'll kind of, and then we'll stick it all in there. Actually, so I'm actually gonna do that. So let's go ahead and let's do that, and then we'll go ahead and stick it in. All right, so I got it bent back a little bit. You know, it's better than what it was, so that's a good thing. 
Um, normally you would want to replace it. Uh, in this situation, since I'm still doing a mock-up and it's only on my project truck, I'm not going to worry too much about it. So now we're going to install the plunger here. It's got the washer up top and then we have our C-clip that slides on top of that. So now I'm going to use the rod to push in the plunger carefully, seat in the washer, and now we're going to grab our C-clip. We're going to take, I have needle nose pliers that fit in there, but normally you want to get C-clamp pliers, but you know, these will work. I'm going to go ahead and squeeze these together, and there's a little groove on the inside. Okay, you make sure your clip gets seated or else it will come shooting out. And then that's it. Okay, let's just double check our clip. I like to normally go in and just see if I can just push it in a little bit more, make sure it's in there. It seems to be seated. Okay, go ahead and push in your master cylinder a couple times. Working good. It's going in and out smoothly. So that's it. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our boot back on. This just slides in through the top here. There's these grooves right here in which it sits. So, I might need a screwdriver for this, but essentially, oh, this one's actually different than the factory one I got. I can still use the factory one. I think this was more of the size. But anyways, you just slip the boot on right there until it gets to the grooves, it seats, and now you have the working master cylinder again. Sweet, so that's pretty much it. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab the clevis, put that on there, and then we should be done. Seems like I got the wrong clevis on here, so as you can see, it slides right through, it's supposed to thread right on, so I won't be able to mock that up. But anyways, that's how you rebuild a master cylinder. I will make another video once I get the right component and I install the, uh, the new pedal assembly. So that's it for today, and like I said, you know, this can be applied to multiple master, uh, master cylinder styles. So uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you guys in another video.